Training Allura for Z Image Turbo has never been easier. Hello humans, when we scale your overload and boy oh boy do I have some mind blowing stuff for you today. Because in this video I will show you how to train Allura for Z Image Turbo as easily and as fast as possible with less than 12GB of VRAM. I will show you how to train people, styles or anything you want either locally or on RomPod right now. So that being said, sit back, relax and let's go. Ok, so for those of you who have watched my previous Allura training videos, you you already know how everything goes. Once again, we're going to be using the AI toolkit web UI to do the training. I've already done multiple times the same videos explaining how to install it, either locally or on RomPod. If you are one of my Patreon supporters, you have both the local and RomPod installers. They are very easy to use, very easy to install. And once you have the AI toolkit installed, you can then launch it to start training your LoRa. Now, once again, if you already know how to train a LoRa or if you haven't trained a LoRa before, the first step is, of course, to get a bunch of different images of the subject that you want to train. You need minimum 10 or 15 images of your subject that you're gonna then put inside a folder and then you're gonna create the corresponding text caption for each image where you're gonna describe the image. Now you don't need to do any of that manually, you can just simply upload all of these images inside ChatGPT or any similar AI tool and ask it to generate a bunch of text captions for each image and then once it's done and you have your data set ready, we can finally start training Allura. And the training is actually very, very simple. I mean, once again, if you already use like AI toolkit or if you watched my previous videos on the subject, you know that I absolutely love this web UI. It is probably like the easiest web UI that was ever created for training Loras. So the very first thing that you want to do is that you're going to click on the datasets button, click on new dataset that you're going to name. In my case, I will be training a Laura of Margot Robbie. So I can just input something like Margot Robbie, then click create, then you're gonna click on the add images button and then you're gonna drag and drop all the files inside that area or you can just click right here and then you're gonna select all the images and all the captions and then click open. It's gonna then import all the images and the corresponding captions. Now for each string, the way I do it is that I often like to use a trigger word inside the caption for each one of my loras and the way I choose my caption is I simply just choose the name of the person that I want to train and I put that inside of the caption. Now you can add it to it before or you can do it right now for each image. It doesn't really matter. And it's the same thing for every subject that you want to train, be it a person, a style, a concept, etc, etc. I often find that using a trigger word makes the LoRa a little bit more powerful and more stable. Okay, so once you've done this and the data set is ready, you can click on new job so that we can prepare the LoRa training. And once again, if you've never used this web UI before, you will see like a bunch of things on the screen, but don't worry, you basically don't need to choose or change very little. It's very, very easy to use. So first here in the training name, you're gonna choose a name for your Laura. And in my case, I always like to put the name of the trigger word. So in my case, I will just put Margot Robbie ZIT, which doesn't really mean Z, it's just Z Image Turbo. This way I know that this specific LoRa is for the Z Image Turbo model. Then for the trigger word, I'm gonna put the same trigger word that I used inside the captions. So in my case, it was Margot Robbie. Then here for the model architecture, you're gonna select the Z Image Turbo, but you will see here that if you have the latest version of the AI toolkit, you will basically see two different possibilities. You have the Z Image Turbo with training adapter, which is kind of like the oldest way of training this model, where it basically uses a training adapter to de-distill the model so that you can train on it and it works fairly well. So you can definitely use this option if you want to. However, I found that the best results are usually made with the Z Image V Turbo, which is a special de-distilled model made by the creator of this AI toolkit, Ostris, which makes this training way way better and way more stable. Okay, so then here you have the low VRAM and layer of loading options. So these are both options that are used to use less VRAM to train the LoRa and you can either use none of them if you want like the fastest training possible. If you have like, I don't know, like 16 gigabytes of VRAM for example, you can definitely just disable both of these options. But if you have less than 16 gigabytes of VRAM, you definitely might want to enable this option as well as 
enable layer offloading. And here what you're gonna do is that you're also gonna offload 0% for the transformer, but 100% for the text encoder. Using this in combination with all the other parameters will allow you to train a LoRa with less than 12 GB of VRAM, which is really, really cool for such an amazing model. Now you can technically use even less VRAM. I've seen people train it with like 8 GB of VRAM as well, but it's definitely gonna take a little bit longer compared to if you add 12 GB of VRAM. So then here you can leave pretty much everything by default, except maybe here the max step saves to keep, which will be like the numbers of models that will be saved on the system. In my case, I don't really care about this number, but you can just input something like 30 and it will save the maximum amount of up to 30 models depending on the amount of steps that you input right here. But since we're not gonna go above the 3000 steps range, this number doesn't really matter. Okay, so then here for the training parameters, you can leave pretty much everything by default. I've already tested and tried all the learning rate and stuff like that. Do not go above like the 0.001. All the parameters by default are pretty good, so you don't need to touch anything. The only thing that you might want to change if you are training, for example, a style, you might want to change the time step bias from balanced to high noise, this will to make the style training much better, but since we are training a person, we can just put that at balanced and it will work perfectly fine. So then here, you're gonna leave everything by default. We're not gonna cache text embeddings because we're using a trigger word, but if you don't want to use a trigger word and you want to use like even less VRAM, for example, you could technically just like delete that and enable this option. However, I also saw that this training doesn't work as well. So this is something to keep in mind. I definitely prefer using the normal trigger word. So in my case, I will leave it like this. So then here you have this advanced option that says differential guidance, which is a very interesting option that technically should, in theory, make the model learn faster and better. So it's always good to enable this. However, in practice, I haven't really seen that much differences, to be honest, so I'm not sure if it works correctly, but there is basically no harm in using this option, so you can definitely just enable this without any issues. So then here, for the data set, make sure that you choose the correct data set of your subject. Here you're gonna leave everything by default once again. Here for the resolutions, if you have less than 12 gigabytes of VRAM, you might want to only enable the 512 resolution training because the lower the resolution that you train on, the less VRAM that you're gonna use. However, if you have like at least 16 gigabytes of VRAM, you can enable all the options up to 1024. So this really depends on the amount of VRAM that you have, but in my case, so I have a 4090, I don't really care, so I'm just gonna leave all the resolutions as is. So then here, so these are basically all the images that will be generated during the training to see the progress of the training. It's not super useful because I will show you that it doesn't really matter if you're using the DZ image D turbo because it's not the same model as the normal Z image turbo that you have downloaded on your computer. So the results that you will see here will not really match what you will see in ConfigUI, for example. However, it's still pretty good to keep in mind and to show like the progress of the training. So basically all you have to do here is just input your trigger word somewhere in the caption. So like for example, instead of woman with red hair playing chess at the park, I'm gonna simply replace woman with Margot Robbie. So it's gonna be Margot Robbie with red hair, playing chess at the park, etc, etc. And I'm gonna do that for pretty much every single caption. And there you go. As you can see, I've replaced in every single caption, or more like I have inserted in every single caption, the trigger word Margot Robbie. And well, now that this is done, guess what? We are literally done. And now I can click create job and start the training by clicking on this little play button right here. Now I'm not gonna do it because I've already done the training before. I do most of my training on RunPod. This way I have my computer free for everything else. But basically you will see that it will first like start the training by downloading all the models, generating a bunch of sample pictures, and then it will do the training. And as you can see, that type of training usually take less than 12 gigabytes of VRAM to do the job. So yeah, this is really, really cool and also pretty fast. And if you go to the sample section, you will see like all the images that are generated during the training. So as you can see, like this was like the before, like the beginning, as you can see, it doesn't really look like Margot Robbie, really not at all. But as we go along, you will see that she starts to look more and more like Margot Robbie as time goes on up until the generation are fairly decent. However, as I said, 
this is not really representative of the real generation quality that you will get on Comfy UI because like this is the de-distilled model. So it is not the model that will be used to generate those images. And the best way to test those images are actually inside Comfy UI. So to do this, you're gonna go to overview and you will see here all of your checkpoints, all of your models, and you're gonna like load them one by one or only load the models that you want to test. So in my case, like I want to test like 1000, 1500, 2000, 2500, 3000. And then once you have put all the LoRa's inside of your models LoRa folder in Sync Comfy UI, and once you've launched Comfy UI, for this video, I prepared a special Comfy UI workflow that you can find on my Patreon. So just download the workflow on your computer and then drag and drop it inside Comfy UI. And you will see this very interesting and maybe a little bit weird workflow that you can use to compare all the LoRa's that you have downloaded at the same time. Now, before I had a very different type of workflow that I used, but unfortunately, all the nodes for XY plot comparison are completely broken right now since the recent Comfy UI update. So I kind of had to improvise and make a completely different workflow to get around this issue. But you'll see that even though it looks very complicated, it is actually very, very simple to use. And I'll show you how. So like here, for example, you're going to choose your model. Here, you're going to input the prompt that you want to use. So like this, for example, here, you're going to choose the seed, the resolution. I'm actually going to choose a little bit bigger resolution, like a 1080p image, for example. Here, you can leave everything else by default. And then on each side, you will see here the LoRa name that you're going to select for the comparison. And as of right now, in this configuration, you can compare up to five different LoRa's at the same time, but I've made it so that you can actually very easily add as much LoRa space comparison as possible. And the way you do this is very, very simple. So if you want, for example, to add another LoRa, you're going to simply come here, hold control, then you're going to select everything, including the white line so that it's easier to separate. Then you're going to press control C to copy, then control V to paste it. Then you're going to drag and place it right here, right below, so that everything is well centered. Then you're going to come here and then change the input count from five to six, then click update inputs. You will see here another like image node space appear. And all you have to do, basically you're going to take this little node, you're going to connect it to that image six place right here. And now, well, that's pretty much it. Then you can choose another LoRa that you want to compare and then click run. Or if you only have like a few LoRa's that you want to compare, if you have like three LoRa's that you want, you can simply just like hold control, then select all the LoRa's that you don't want to compare, click on this little button to bypass and it will only generate three LoRa's at the same time. Simple as that. But in my case, since I have like five LoRa's, I'm just gonna re-enable everything. I'm going to delete the sixth one since I don't need it. Put that back to five. Update input. And then I'm going to make sure that every single LoRa right here is different. So the first one is going to be like a thousand steps, then 1500 steps, then 2000 steps, 2500 steps, 3000 steps. And now that this is done, I'm simply going to click run. And at the end, we get something like this. As you can see, for each LoRa, you have the generated image and then the comparison side by side, one after the other in this section right here. And I mean, yeah, there you go. Then it's kind of up to you to choose which LoRa you prefer depending on the image that was generated. So it's really like a question of personal taste, but you obviously need to do multiple different generations with multiple different parameters, resolutions, up until you decide yourself the LoRa that you want to keep or LoRa's that you want to keep. Sometimes for certain like style training, I would keep multiple different versions of LoRa's depending on the results that I get and then use them whenever I need a specific image. And I mean, yeah, there you go. This has been LoRa training for the Z Image Turbo. Once again, if you already done like a LoRa training before, it is fairly similar. It is always the same thing. The values and parameters may change, but the principle always stays the same no matter the model. And Z Image Turbo is definitely no exception. However, keep in mind that right now we are training on a distilled model. So if the results are not 100% to your liking, that is also completely normal. The training will become definitely much, much better once we have access to do Z image base model. Because once we have that, training and fine tuning future models will be much easier and much, much better. But if you cannot wait for the model to be released and you want to use it right now, well, 
there you go. So definitely try this out yourself and have some fun. And there we are with folks. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you also so much to my Patreon supporters for supporting my videos. You guys are absolutely awesome. You people are the reason why I'm able to make these videos. So thank you so much. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.